actor David Oyelowo is known for his portrayal of Martin Luther King Jr. in the movie Selma, but now he's taking on a very different role. His new movie, Captive, is a true story of fugitive Brian Nichols 10 years ago. He was at the center of a huge manhunt in the Atlanta area after killing four people while escaping from a courthouse. The story focuses on the relationship between Nichols and Alshie Smith. She's a woman that he held hostage for seven hours. I gotta use the bathroom. Uh, go for it. You use the bathroom. Everybody's gotta use the bathroom. The bathroom. We all gotta use the bathroom. Use the bathroom. Hey! What are you doing? Well, I can't go with the door open. I, I, I turn around. I turn around. Well, I can't go with you standing there. I don't trust you, Ashley. I don't. I don't, I don't trust you, Ashley. Okay. So what are we gonna do? You're gonna talk, you're gonna talk, all right? I'm gonna shut the door and you're gonna talk, all right? Okay. Hey, hold on. That's it, we're gonna go to Mexico. We're gonna get that truck. We're gonna go to Mexico, we gotta rob a bank, though. Understand where we're going, Ashley? Where we're going? Mexico. That's right. David O. Yellow, well, welcome back to Studio 57. Thanks for you, having you me. You also produce this, and we should say, David O. Yellow, as we've never seen you before. I saw a headline, David, that said, From Pillar to Killer. <laughs> talking about David O. Yellow, which I thought was kind of clever. <laughs> and I know you choose your role so carefully. Because he went from playing Martin Luther King yes. to this role. Yes. Right, right, right. Yeah, I do choose them carefully. And, you know, as wonderful as it was to play Dr. King, you don't want to be associated with one role for the rest of your life. So, so you said, let me go to the total extreme? The complete opposite kind of character. A man who who says he has demons in him. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he, he, for people who don't know the story, Brian Nichols broke out of that courthouse jail in Atlanta, killed four people before then taking Ashley Smith hostage for seven hours. And they had this incredible interaction that led to him uh, letting her go and giving himself up. One of the people story. was a judge. He walked in the courtroom yeah. and just shot the judge yeah. and walked out of the yeah. room. So the how did you go about, about fashioning this character? Mm -hmm. Well, it, you know, to be honest, I, I had reticence uh, taking it on for the reasons we've talked about. You know, playing a, a killer is not the most comfortable thing, especially as, for me as an actor, it all involves getting as deep into the head of the person as possible. And someone who did what he did, you, you, you know there are some dark spaces you're going to have to go. But uh, I don't know, it's something about what happened with Ashley Smith that mm. so inspired me, the life she went on to live beyond mm. this event. That's what made me jump in. In mm. fact, you met with her personally. I did, yeah. She was on set with us for a lot of the shoot. And uh, meeting her and seeing the life she's crafted after being a meth addict who lost her custody of her daughter and, you know, her husband had died in a... In a <laughs> Uh, drug-related incident, but uh, you know her life is now transcendently beautiful. So, uh, mm. so, but she really, really helped because I couldn't get to Brian Nichols, who's serving multiple mm. life sentences. Yeah. But she somehow found the humanity in this guy, who was very, yeah. very scary. Yeah, I think he went into a fugue state that day that never oh. really stopped until he saw the human being that Ashley Smith was on that day. Something about her made his humanity kind mm. of resurface, and that's why. I believe she didn't become and, his fifth victim. And thinking about his son. Thinking about his son, um, also the, the Rick Warren's book that they read with each other. I mean, it was a human purpose -driven exchange. Life. Yeah, the purpose-driven yeah. life. What's interesting is you really do not know as this day unfolds how it's going to end. Right. It's mm. true. Right. Yeah. It's and that was true. a tricky thing because <laughs> if, you, if you know the story, it only took place 10 years ago in Atlanta, you kind of know how it ended, but our job with the film was to keep you on the edge of your seat. And the, and the reason that happens is no one really knows what happened in those seven hours they were in the apartment yeah. together. But let's talk about you and Nightingale, number one HBO yes. nominated for an Emmy. You're the yeah. only one on the screen for over 90 minutes, yeah. playing a guy that's really lost all sorts of touch with reality. Mm. How do you prepare for that, David? For the first time, you moved out of the house. I did. You have a wife and four children. I did, I, and I never liked to leave them. Uh, but this is a guy who had a d dissociative identity disorder, seven different voices buzzing around in his head, really traumatized guy. I just felt that's not what you want around your wife and kids, so I, so I, I moved out for the duration of the shoot, yeah. And it required that much focus. It did, it did. I think yeah. telling the truth costs as an actor. You know, you can phone it in if you want, but I really don't know how to do that. And <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so yeah, you, you know, you've got to, got to go in hard. Brian Nichols, that left me feeling pretty, pretty uh, hollowed out mm -hmm. after, after playing that role as well. Oh. But he got so into the role, people didn't even know he was British. I know, I yeah, read that. Yeah, yeah it's funny. They're like, David. why are you pretending to be British, David <laughs> 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 yes, Nicely no. done. Uh, thank you. Thank nice you Nice to have much. you here. David Oyelo, oh, great to see you. Come back again. I will. And Captive opens in theaters on Friday.